Hey, Steve Mignogna here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1949 Studebaker Land Cruiser. Now, anybody who knows Toyota history will remember the Toyota SUV, the Land Cruiser. Well, long before that, Studebaker used the Land Cruiser name on these long wheelbase family haulers in the 1950s and 40s. Now here's the thing, Studebaker, a lot of people don't even remember they existed, but they started in 19 or 1852. In fact, long before Henry Ford was even born, the Studebaker brothers were building Conestoga wagons. And I'm gonna bet that some of you folks watching this, your ancestors moved west to the Western states in Studebaker built Conestoga wagons. They made that many, lots of them. Of course, Studebaker built cars through 1966 in Canada and through 1963 in the United States, and this is one of them. Now this one here is a top level Land Cruiser. You gotta remember in 1949, there was the Champion, the cheap car, the Commander in the middle, and the Land Cruiser. The big difference about the Land Cruiser was more trim, but also a 123 inch long wheelbase compared to the 119 inch wheelbase of the Commander. So the longer wheelbase gave a better ride. Another detail too, seen on the Commander and the Land Cruiser are the five lug wheels. We see them right here. The cheap Champion would have four lug wheels, lightweight suspension, little drums and stuff like that. So the same basic styling, but when you saw five lug nuts, you're looking at a midline Commander or the top line Land Cruiser. Now, cool details abound on these things. And something that's kind of neat is the fact that in 1949, the directional signals became these little glass things right here. This is not plastic, that's glass kind of cool, but the vestigial turn signals of 1947, 48 remained, and instead of getting rid of it or doing something different here, Studebaker put a little stainless steel bullet there and kind of gave it a facelift. But again, that doesn't do anything at all except hide the fact that Studebaker was reusing the stamping for the grill when they redesigned the grill in 49 to have this configuration here. Now under the hood of this thing, don't expect to find anything other than a six banger, and there it is. And that is a 100 horsepower, 245.6 cubic inch flathead six. Uh, fairly robust little engine. 1951, of course, would bring the 232 cubic inch V8. And check this out. The V8 was 232 cubes. In other words, it was uh, 15 or so cubic inches smaller than this inline six, but it was 20 horsepower more potent. And remember too that Studebaker in 51 was ahead of Chevrolet, Pontiac, uh, and uh, Buick with a V8 engine, a modern pushrod V8. So again, 1951, first Studebaker V8. Now something interesting here, a lot of people say Studebaker, they remember the bullet nose stood right there. And that's something that arrived in 1950. So this nose here, went away in 49, replaced by the bullet nose. Now before this styling cycle, which arrived in 1947, which was the first of Studebaker's envelope body styles, that is what a Studebaker looked like right there. Sort of the potato with the bolt-on fenders, the pontoon fenders. But again, we get into 1947 and a whole different design came along, these puppies right here. And again, we can see the, the Raymond Lowy Starlight Coupe with that beautiful wraparound rear window. Bob Hope, a comedian, used to say, it's the coming or going Studebaker. Which way is it going? Is it coming or going? But there's that big rear window on the Starlight Coupe. But again, this grill was gone in 49 or 50 in favor of the bullet nose. And there it is right there. The same basic car from the firewall back, but that bullet nose right there was a stunning feature that was uh, really set Studebaker apart. The joke is that you take a 51 bullet nose Studebaker and a 58 Edsel, park them nose to nose overnight, and in the morning you get three lousy cars. Fill in the gaps for yourself. But anyway, this is the underhood region, pretty much unmolested on this thing. Interesting details, we see of course, <clears throat> the spark plug wires run together in this metal loom right here from the distributor to each of the spark plugs. And again, most people today, hot rodders say, you never want to run spark plug wires next to each other. They cross fire. Well, it seems like it worked pretty good here. Now keep in mind, this six volt system on this thing would not exactly have been making a hot spark. So I guess it was safe enough for Studebaker, certainly. Here's the auxiliary oil filter right here. You take this off, there's a canister inside. And modern uh, spin-on oil filters were still a few years away when this car was built. Vacuum wipers right here, which are kind of a stinker because if you're going through an intersection at night, it's foggy, it's raining. When you punch the gas, the vacuum diminishes, the wipers slow down when you most need them. But again, vacuum wipers seen here. Let's take a look inside. And again, this one being a Land Cruiser <clears throat> has this chrome trim here 
three bits here. And again, the longer 123 inch wheelbase, which is four inches longer than the, uh, the lesser models. But again, suicide doors, kind of cool. Now this one here is a three speed manual. And we can see right there, the clutch pedals down in the floor. In fact, through the floorboard, notice the master cylinder. Yep, if you had to change or alter or fill a fluid, you had to open a little patch in the bottom. And that thing right down there is the master cylinder, which is where you would, uh, that screw on is where you'd add your fluid. Uh, 1954, I believe, added the, uh, the, the firewall mounted master cylinder for much better use. Now this was a rated elite car when it was originally born, but somewhere along the line, somebody added this Delco under dash auxiliary radio. Here it is, D-E-L-C-O. And again, Delco, of course, a division of General Motors now, or I believe it was then, but here is this unit that somebody hung underneath because they get tired of the sound of silence with apologies to Simon and Garfunkel. But inside of this thing, you know, fairly commodious, love that word, big interior, lots of room. And again, the Land Cruiser was a longer wheelbase version of the Commander. And uh, the whole idea was, you know, cruising the land in your long wheelbase Studebaker in more comfort than you would have had in the shorter wheelbase cars with 119 inch wheelbase. And again, the suicide doors. Now something kind of interesting here is if you wanted to invest your money, used to be you bought stocks. Well, this right here is 100 shares of Studebaker Packard Corporation stocks right here, issued September 17th, 1963. And we see on the back here that the original buyer of this was handled by Gregory and Sons, September 1963. Uh, Elise Peterson apparently was the recipient of this. Payne Weber, Jackson Curtis. And again, New York federal tax paid on September 25th. Now here's the thing. Here's the problem. This is 100 shares of Studebaker stock. Well, three months later, on December 26th of 1963, Studebaker stopped building automobiles. So was this stock useless? Was it worthless? Not really. Got to remember that Studebaker continued building cars in Canada through 1966, but beyond automobiles, they made lots of stuff. Gravely yard tractors, uh, nose cones for missiles, STP oil, which stood for scientifically treated petroleum. Those things continued to make lots of money. And in fact, in 19 79, Studebaker was absorbed by McGraw Edison, and probably whoever bought that stock did okay. So it's an error to think that Studebaker stopped and died and croaked and went away after December 26, 1963. They didn't. They, got, they stayed in cars in Canada, but the board of directors decided to get out of the automotive market where they were not really making money, but they were still around. So that stock is not necessarily useless. But here's that wraparound rear window we see here. And again, this is only a small version of it. Again, two pieces of glass curved on the Starlight Coupe. This would go all the way to here. Just a beautiful, you know, almost a UFO spaceship looking thing. And it was a strange design. Very long trunk lid on this thing. Let's see if we can open this up. Nah, unfortunately, it's got carthritis. But little details we can see. Look at this. Somewhere along the line, somebody with a depression era mentality, maybe the, the lock broke, so they whipped up a little hasp right here for a little a little safety lock to keep it closed up. Oops, sorry, shouldn't have done that. But anyway, yeah, there it goes, we fixed it. And look at this right here, a reverse light right here with the word Studebaker. This is a factory item. See the little word Studebaker right there? That is really cool. So a dealer accessory right here. And this would have been something maybe when you put it in reverse, this thing would come on or you switch it on manually so when you're backing up, you weren't as blind at night. And notice too, 1949, these space age uh, taillight housings here, again with glass not plastic lenses. And uh, so here it is, the back of the Land Cruiser. And again, here we have the word Land Cruiser, not just for Toyotas, the Studebaker Land Cruiser. In fact, the Land Cruiser nomenclature la lasted well into the 60s. Uh, in fact, well, the 1950s for sure. And whenever you saw Land Cruiser, it meant long wheelbase Studebaker. It would look like a champ, but it was actually longer wheelbase for a better ride on the open highway as you made your way across country. Not in your Conestoga wagon, which maybe you would have done in the 1850s, but in the 1950s, you might have moved from Boston to LA for a new future in your Studebaker Land Cruiser. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel and ring the bell, like this, share it with your friends, and that bell will let you know when the next video hits, which is tomorrow.